How's it going, everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech, and also to my look at the ASUS Prime Z790A Wi-Fi motherboard, along with the very exciting Intel Raptor Lake i5 13600K. A perfect budget, not necessarily completely budget for everybody, but a budget high performance combo. And yeah, it definitely performs, as you guys will see. Now, I already did an unboxing video of this board, so if you want to see that, you can check out the link in the description. But now we can actually add some performance numbers and also temp numbers to see how the CPU performs with this board. And again, like I mentioned, it is pretty much a perfect combo, really for the price point of course but before that let's quickly go over the board itself so pricing wise the z790a is retailing for around 240 dollars on amazon or around 5600 rand for here in south africa for the i5 13600k once it's actually available which should also be a today or i believe pre-orders it should be around 320 dollars or 7200 rand now, before we begin, are you planning to upgrade it to the newest Z790 platform and the 13th generation of CPUs? Or are you sticking with your current setup? Maybe even switching to something else? But let me know down in the comments below because I'm pretty curious to see what everybody's planning to do with everything that's being released now. Now, like I mentioned in the unboxing video, this is my first Prime board that I've reviewed in a couple of years, really. And I have to say, I love the design that ASUS went with, especially compared to the older version that I have. Now, the space of white and a black theme looks really nice and it would fit perfect inside a white themed PC bowl, which I did and it actually looked really nice. Now, I just need to add a white GPU as well and then maybe add one of ASUS's ROG Strix white GPUs. I think that's going to look perfect. Now, the white spacer theme design isn't over the top. It only has some accents on the IR cover, the chips, the downstalls, the M.2 heat spreaders. So I think it's the perfect mix where it's not over the top, but also not too little. The new Z790 platform does feature the same LGA 1700 socket as we got on the Z690 platform. And then also both are interchangeable with motherboards and also CPUs. So if you have a 12th generation CPU, you can also fit it on the this board here or vice versa again now again as for the cpu it is the i5 13600k which is going to be the sweet spot between a performance and also cost and then also for all of the enthusiasts out there you do also have your manual overclocking available so if you want to boost it a bit more uh, you can definitely do that and in the video we did do some basic overclocking that everybody can really do which i'll go over and we did get a nice little extra boost in performance there without really doing anything which is always nice now the 13600k has 14 cores and 20 threads which is again crazy for an i5 the performance scores has a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz and a boost of 5.1 gigahertz while the efficient cores has a 2.6 gigahertz base and 3.9 gigahertz a boost however by just using the standard oc switch in the bios which anybody can really again do do just push it to the max there and then you'll be able to get 5.3 gigahertz on all performance cores and 4.1 gigahertz on all of the efficient cores now just make sure that your cooling is up to snub because even though it doesn't necessarily get that that hot you will get an increase in a temperature so again just make sure about that but we'll get into cooling a bit later now as for the vrms it is a 16 plus a one phase 60 amp power stage which isn't massive but it's definitely going to be enough if you want to run a stock 13900k or it's completely fine for the 13600k as well even over a clock so it's definitely going to be plenty for the amount you actually pay for the sport so i have no problems there now moving into a memory the prime supports a maximum of 128 gigs on the four dual channel ddr5 dim slot which is overclockable up to 7000 megahertz now we didn't go that high i only had a 5600 megahertz kit from kingston the fury beast or 
RGB 32 gig kit, which looks really awesome and also performs great as well. So a big shout out to Kingston for that. But now that's DDR5. There is going to be a DDR4 board options available as well. There's not going to be that many that I've seen. And I think that's definitely going to be a nice option if you want to, again, go a bit more budget orientated where you don't need to spend that much on DDR5. So you do have that options at least. Now, if you want to see more motherboard or CPU videos, subscribe because I do have a couple more to come both on this channel and then also on the second channel linked up below. So definitely subscribe for those. Now, dropping it down, we have the five PCI Express slot with the top slot being a PCI Express Gen 5X16, while the second and a bottom are PCI Express Gen 4 running at 4X speed. The final two are PCI Express 3, a 1X speed. So that's just for some additional add-on cards. Also, only the top slot does feature a Suces armor design for, again, a better durability, which is definitely needed for some of these hefty, hefty RTX 4000 series cards like the 49s that are just complete massive. So that's definitely going to be needed. Now, I also love that the, the Q release button is added here, which does make just releasing your GPU so much simpler. Just press the button and it releases the lock there. No need to pry your finger in there or get a screwdriver to actually try and get it out, especially if you do have everything installed in your system. So that's a really nice time saver there. Now, as for storage, you do get a four Gen 4 M.2s, all four under heat sprays and also featuring Asus's Q latch, which just like the Q release does just make your life so much simpler installing and, and uh, in, uninstalling probably not that but getting out your m.2 just lock it in place no need to worry about screws falling out and trying to get it in there so it's again just a time saver which i really really do like now there is a no gen 5 support for our m.2s on this board which really isn't that big of an issue uh, gen 5 still being very very new there, i don't believe there's any consumer uh, m.2s gen 5s available yet so and if once they're actually available they're going to be really really expensive so give it a couple of years and by then i think you can possibly upgrade to a higher board if you wanted to uh, but for the most part for gaming you're not necessarily going to be <laughs> need that crazy gen 5 speed uh, second generation gen and four is already crazy fast so that's honestly all you really need for now and then finally you do also get four sata three ports especially two of them being 90 degrees here on the side which is pretty handy now for our io you do get a good amount here with your 2.5 gigabit ethernet port wi-fi 6e and enough usbs although i would have liked it two to four or more uh, but that's just me i do use a lot of usbs for all of my comp components and everything externals and so on so that's just for me and then also you do get all of the needed onboard io you do have your q led indicators here all of your uh, pwm fan headers rgb headers and so on as so well and just before we get into the fun stuff if you have an idea for a product you would like me to feature either in a video or a comparison or whatever then tag me and the brand in a tweet and i will see if i can get that arranged for you now then, of course, to no surprise, the i5-13600K at 5.3 gigahertz does extremely, extremely well. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to retest some of my previous uh, CPUs with the RTX 1490, uh, the new system with new RAM and everything. So I wasn't able to retest all of those, uh, but I have no doubt that it's going to perform really, really well against the other CPUs. I think Intel did a very good job with the upgrade here on the 13th generation. Previous generations I wasn't too crazy about, but they really did a great job here. However, of course, we will have to wait and see how it performs against the i7 and then also even the i9 3900K, but more importantly, of course, the Ryzen chips, which I currently don't have. So we'll have to see how this one compares to those, especially for the price point. However, again, I do think that it's going to perform extremely extremely well however games aside when it actually comes into production and other benchmarks the 13600k does a fall behind here i did it compare it to the 7950x again completely 
fair com uh, comparison and being double the price, double the core count, all of that, completely fair. But I just wanted to actually add it in there and to see. But even though it does fall behind the twice expensive CPU, it actually beats out the i7 and 12700K, which I was extremely impressed by when it actually launched. I still have mine and I love the thing. So uh, it's still a really good CPU. Now it's mostly due to the 5.3 gigahertz scoring higher in single core and also in a multi-core Cinebench scores compared to the 12700K and only losing to the higher core CPUs are like the 12900 and also the 7950X and we'll add the 13900K in there as well once I have that one benchmarked. But again for an i5 just falling slightly behind the 12900 non-K it's still very good. <laughs> now as for cooling, I paired it up with my Corsair H100i Elite LCD, which is a 240mm AIO, and it did keep the 13600K at 5.3 gigahertz on the performance cores and 4.1 gigahertz on the efficient cores in check at around the mid 80s. It's not perfect, uh, but it's definitely good enough. And in uh, games, it was uh, around the 60 degrees, which is completely fine there. Now VRM attempts are from uh, HW info looked really good as well peaking at around 60 degrees if the readout was correct but i believe it should be now thanks to my upgraded 2000 watt platinum power supply from cooler master i really needed that one for the 40 and 90. i i had issues previously with just the amount of power draw so a big shout out to cooler master for that one but for the 13600k it reached a maximum of around 160 watts which yeah is pretty power hungry for an i5 but i can really tell you guys that it's nothing compared to the 13900k i slightly played around with that one and the power draw is pretty much twice so yeah <laughs> now depending on your gpu a 500 watt power supply necessarily won't be enough anymore so you might look upwards to around 700 watts now especially if you are planning to do some manual overclocking and push the uh, power limit even higher from for your manual overclock so just keep that in mind now with all of that out of the way what's my final thoughts on the asus prime z 790a wi-fi a Wi-Fi. <laughs> There's so many different variants. And also the i5 13600K. Honestly, I think this is a perfect combo if you do need the, the of the features of the Z790 platform, uh, all the old Gen 5 and, and so on. I think paired up with the 13600K, again, at price point of $320 for the CPU and $240 for the motherboard. That's a really nice uh, combo. For here in South Africa, paired up is around like 15 thousand rand which is expensive but you get a pretty nice combo especially again for the performance of that i5 but of course this is not the only board option you get from asus you do have the tough versions and so on as well but again for the price point being much lower i think perfect combo that it has pretty much everything that you need that that's all you really need again for a more budget orientated system budget now, if you want to get the motherboard or the CPU for yourself, definitely check out the link in the video description for that, where it's going to be all the links of all of the different countries of Africa, US, UK, Canada, all of that. So check out the link down there. Also, again, if you have any recommendations for other comparisons, um, motherboard videos, CPU videos, GPUs, all of that, let me know down in the comment below. But probably the best way, if you have any questions or, or troubleshooting or recommendations again, is to join our Discord channel linked below as well, where I or somebody else will be able to help you out there if you do have any questions but anyway that's pretty much it a big shout out to asus south africa standing over the board and also the cpu um, again if you guys want to get it for yourself links will be in the description below and i do hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please like share subscribe and comment like always and i'll check all of you next time cheers guys